Welcome, praise God, all of our members and partners and covenant friends to another Tuesday evening Bible study. We trust that you get Bible and you're ready to get right into the Word. But before we do, I want to encourage y'all guys to get on the phone and call friends and cousins and brothers and whether they're locally in the triad or somewhere in another state and uh, encourage them to not only rock, watch the broadcast but join the YouTube channel. That's how we're going to get the gospel out. All of us is when we, uh, you know, get uh, evangelistic minded. Praise God. So uh, go ahead and do that, whether you email or whether you tweet or whether that's just a phone call and let people know that the word for today is on the air. And we welcome our live stream audience, all of our partners and covenant friends, continue to send your emails and your testimonies about what God is doing in your life, regardless of where you're at. All right, let's get right into the word of God. Those of you that have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to St. John's Gospel, Chapter 7. And I want to teach from the subject, Rivers of Living Water. Man, I love the picture they're putting up, praise God, because that's so refreshing, and that's what water represents. And we use it as a subtopic, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen, refreshing. Times of refreshings come from the presence of God. Well, we know that's the Spirit of God. And um, praise God for rivers of living water. Praise God. And there is an outpouring that has already started. Not is coming, has already started in the earth. Sunday, I, I, I preached a message. I was in Winston-Salem. I preached a message called The Building Up of Zion about how God was building back up the church and restoring healing and restoring signs and wonders and miracles uh, to Zion. Well, thank God that's part of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Before Jesus returned, he's coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. It's going to be a glorious church. And there's going to be manifestations, and stronger manifestations of his glory and his power. Amen. Paul put it this way. When I came to you, I didn't come with uh, enticing words of man wisdom, but in power and demonstration of the spirit. Well, the spirit represents water, rivers of living water. So I want you to uh, get your Bible and let's follow these scriptures. Let's look at St. John's Gospel and let's look at uh, chapter 7. We're going to start reading with verse 37. And this is Jesus doing teaching. In the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. Now, I want you to just get that picture. He said, In the last day of the feast, of the, 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 the great day of the feast. In other words, everybody that was somebody was in the temple that day. And you got a bunch of religious people over here doing religious things in a dead, dry temple. And Jesus, the reason he cried, he's standing way out here from, from the temple. And he's saying to these religious folks, if y'all guys really thirst, come over here to me and drink. And then he says, he that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water or innermost being. We know he's not talking about the physical belly. He's talking about out of his spirit. This innermost being shall flow. Notice there's a flow. Rivers of living water. But this may he of the spirit that they that believe it on him should receive for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Notice he was talking about the Holy Ghost. He's calling the Holy Ghost or the Spirit rivers of living water. Praise God. And that's the main thing that we need to understand, that there are rivers of living water, praise God. He's calling the Spirit of God rivers, rivers. But this make ye of the Spirit that they which believe on him should receive for the Holy Ghost is not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So what he's saying is 
if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And this he was speaking of the Spirit. And, and notice it was the great day of the feast. He's talking to the most religious people of the day, scribes and Pharisees over here in the temple doing religious things. And they're, they're thir people are thirsty. And what he's saying is, hey, that's not going to quench your thirst. You need this outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Because the scriptures have said, if you believe on me, out of your belly are uh, innermost being shall flow rivers, rivers, rivers. Not a trickle, not, not a little stream, rivers. And that's so very important. Thank God. And yet he was talking about the Holy Ghost. So there's going to be an outpouring of the Spirit of God on people, on lives. Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost when they thought that men was drunk. They said, these men are drunk. They said, no, 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 no. These men are not drunk. Seemingly, it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days God shall pour out of his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. He was talking about an outpouring of the Spirit. He said the Spirit of God. He was talking about an outpouring. Men were beginning to speak with other tongues and they were stamp with stammering lips. And the Bible says there was devout men there from every nation under, under the sun. And so God poured out on the day of Pentecost. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. And he's liking these rivers of water unto the pouring out of the Spirit all over again. In other words, there's coming a great anointing of God. And notice, it's not going to come over here. It's not going to start over there. He said, out of your belly, in other words, out of you, shall flow rivers of water. When you get turned on, when you get hungry, when you get thirsty. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst at the righteous, for they shall be what? Filled. So he's talking about the individual. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? And so the question is, are you thirsty this evening? Are you hungry for God? Praise God. Because notice, this water is not going to be poured out just to anyone. It's going to be poured out to him that thirst. Jesus said, if you're thirsty. See, a lot of Christians are lost their thirst and hunger for God. They don't read their Bible. Back here uh, about three, four years ago when the pandemic ended, a lot of people never recovered. There were people on fire for God. There were people, at, you know, at the altars crying out for God, breathing God for revival, but was hit so bad and through loss. And some people lost loved ones. Some people lost jobs, businesses, home. And some people never recovered, and they've lost their thirst. They lost their hunger for God. But there's coming an outpouring of the Spirit of God like never before. That's why he said he was talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was not yet given. So the Holy Ghost, of course, is representative of water, rivers of living water. Praise God. And one thing about these rivers, and I'll go ahead and bring this out right now. You know, a river is not just for you. A river is for everybody. When you find a river, you can this for the whole community. You can go down there and wash your clothes. You can get water. You get, so what God is pouring out on you and coming out of us is for everybody. It's not just about you and your four. God says this thing is going to affect the whole neighborhood. It's going to affect the whole community. You know, when you find these communities, you go down by the river, you find different people. Some people washing clothes. Some people bathe. Some people getting water. A river, praise God, will not only sustain you, it will sustain the whole community, a whole city, praise God. Some of you that live right here in in High Point City Lake, we know there's a river out there. Praise God. Look, look who it sustained. And so God is saying there's coming something that's going to not only affect your life, but it's going to affect everyone around you. But you got to be thirsty. Notice Jesus has to say, come unto me and drink. Amen. He's not going to make you do it. It's an invitation for thirsty, hungry Christ Christians that cannot get enough of the word, that cannot get enough of his presence, praise God. So this message is a mature message. It's for people that's hungry. It's for people who wants to walk in God's glory, walk in God's manifest presence. 
Jesus called this water then the Holy Spirit that flowed out for thirsty people. That's what he called it. He called this water the Holy Spirit that flowed out for thirsty believers. Thirsty believers. People that are thirsty. People that are hungry for God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst at the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Notice that's a law. What you hunger and thirst for is what you're going to be filled, whether it's good or bad. And there are a lot of people that lost their thirst and hunger for God. They never recovered. Not only from the pandemic, they never, the church haven't really been the same. There are a lot of people that took on the same attitude as the restaurants. During the pandemic, it was hard to find people to work. All of a sudden, people got their little stemmy chest, and, and you go into the restaurant, they say, please forgive us because we're low on personnel or, or we're low on so-and-so, and if the service is slow because no one wanted to work. Well, that's the same type of attitude that came on a lot of people in the church. Some of them got lazy. They, they like live streaming at home. And I'm not knocking anyone that's live streaming tonight. Praise God, I understand that. But it's not... It's not like being under the manifest presence of God, and that's what the pandemic was all about. It tried to separate us from the from the presence of God. And I don't care how much you virtually was trying to learn through school and virtually trying to do this stuff at all. It was not like your children being in class under a physical body where the teacher was teaching. And so there is a difference, praise God. Let us forsake not the sin of ourselves. One to another. There's a flow that's coming back to the house of God. And God says, I want it to begin in you. Praise God. And so this is not for everyone, but Jesus called this water the whole, that, that flowed out, the Holy Spirit pouring out for thirsty believers. Now, I want you to look at Jude 120 because... He said, out of your belly or innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. So we can see how prayer is connected to the Holy Spirit. Because on the day of Pentecost, what were they doing? They was in the little upper room praying, waiting on the promise of the Holy Ghost. And then when, when the day of, they was all in one accord, the power hit. It came in this mighty rushing wind. Well, Notice this thing went in them. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God that had tongues of fire set on them. God set on them. The Holy Ghost was infused in their spirit. And that same Holy Ghost that brought revival is the same thing that God says he's doing in this last outpouring. But build up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost out of you. Build yourself up. Thank God for preaching and teaching the word. I know some of you are blessed. You was here on Sunday. Some of you was, came Sunday evening. And, and, and I can help you and I can do my job. That's part of my call as a pastor. He gave some pastors. Why? For the perfected of the saints and for the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ. But there's times you can't get to me. I can't fight. He said, out of you, build up yourself. This is what we're going to have to get back into praying more in the Holy Ghost. Praying in other tongues. He that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but who? Unto God. How be it? He edifies himself. Just don't wait till you come to church. Edify yourself. Build yourself up. Hallelujah. Before I ever preach to you, I build up myself. I want to be built up. I want to be full so these rivers of living water, he was speaking of the spirit, they are flowing out of me so I can build you up. You can't charge someone else's battery if yours dead. So that's why God is saying this is a continual flow. This is not just a Sunday morning thing or Tuesday night thing. This is building yourself up. Praise God. When you're driving in the car, when you're in the grocery store, wherever you're at, if you got extended time, build yourself up. That's what I do, particularly if I know I got a trip and it's going to be an hour. I'm either going to put on the word of God or I'm going to pray in the spirit. I say, I might well build myself up. Praise God. Why? Because there are things we don't even know what to pray for as we are. According to Romans, the 28th chapter, likewise, you know not what, not how, we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. But you don't know what I need in my life. I don't know what you need in your life. You might need strength. You might need finance. You might need a turn. But the Holy Ghost knows. 
And when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, it makes us unselfish because it could be for someone else. But we are building ourselves up at the same time. We don't know what to pray for as well, but the Spirit itself make it intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered in articulate speech. In other words, English. For he that searcheth the heart, who is that? God. No one is the mind or the language of the spirit, for he made intercession for us according to the perfect will of God. Why? Why are you shooting? Hit and miss prayers when you can pray the perfect will of God for your mama, the perfect will of God for your children, the perfect will of God for your church. And at the same time, you're stirring up these rivers because you're building yourself up. Out of you shall flow rivers of living water. And so as the church begin to pray, and that's what the church didn't go from the from the from the from the prayer room to, uh, from the pulpit to the prayer room. It went from the prayer room to the pulpit. They was praying. It was built off of prayer. They went to house to house, breaking the bread, fellowship around the word. And when we begin to pray in the Holy Ghost again, we're stirring up these rivers of living water. Praise God! And there's a great Holy Spirit outpouring that has already begun. And we'll begin to intensify until the return of Jesus, praise God. You say, well, I don't see it. Well, maybe you're in the wrong place. Maybe you need to, if you're not getting rained on, maybe because you, you're in the wrong place because the Holy Ghost is being poured out. If, you, if it's dry and you're still thirsty, that's why Jesus said, come over here. Maybe you're in the wrong church. Maybe you're in the wrong denomination. Maybe you're in the wrong man. I don't know. But I do know what God says, that in the last days, He's going to pour the Spirit upon all flesh, Baptist flesh, Methodist flesh, Presbyterian flesh, Lutheran, Church of God, Catholic, white, black, Hispanic, Korean, all flesh. There's a great outpouring. Hallelujah. And if you not experience it, maybe you're just in the wrong place. Praise God. Now, look at this. This water then will only flow out of Christians that are thirsty for it. That might be the issue. Maybe you're satisfied. Maybe you're just one of these little, you know, I read a little snatch out of the Bible, Christians, and, you know, now lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord, so to keep. If I die far away, pray the Lord, so to take. God bless you, dear. <sighs> Maybe you're one of those little lightweight Christians that don't have any depth to their life. Huh? This ain't going to just fall on anyone. Notice Jesus said, if any man thirst, and he's talking about folks in church, the last day of the great feast, he, he, he said, come over here and drink. For the scriptures have said, I don't know what they're preaching over there, but the scripture says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he was talking about the Holy Ghost. She got to be thirsty. Now, I've been in ministry 45 years, been saved 50 years. This is my jubilee. I got saved in 1974, right out of high school. And I've been saved. This is 2024. And I'm still thirsty. You would think that many years, well, and I'm still hungry for God. I'm still studying. I'm still meditating. I'm still digging in the scripture. I'm still thirsty. I mean, it, listen. You got to want this thing. This water is only for Christians that are thirsty for it. Look at Psalms 42. Look at verse 1 and 2. To a skillful, all of that, all of that, that's not in my Bible. <laughs> I'm just going to start where my Bible reads. Psalms of Korah, we know that. As the heart, who's the heart? It's the deer. Panics. Pants and longs for the water brook, so panted my soul. Or I pant and long for you, O oh God. My inner self, see, out of his belly. You got to want this. Thirst for God. I want more of God. I want more. I want the same results Jesus got. I want to walk in the gifts of the Spirit. I want to walk in might. I want to walk in counsel. I want to, this ain't just for lightweight Christians. We're talking about folks that's hungry. My inner self, thirst for God, for the living God. 
When shall I come and behold God face to face? I won't see him face to face. Well, get in the word, you'll begin to see him face to face. Praise God. Hallelujah. So that, he said, as the heart of the deer panted for the water brook, so panted my soul or my inner self after you. In other words, the deer can spring at great heights and he goes through the woods springing and jumping. He can travel distances in miles. But the more he does that, the more he becomes dehydrated. And then all of a sudden, when he becomes dehydrated, water is not an option. Water is a necessity. He begins to pant. <sighs> You've seen a dog pant. <sighs> In other words, I gotta have water. I got. It's not. It's not. It's not a matter of 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 this is a. Uh, it's a necessity. It's a necessity. It's not. I, I got to have water. And he searched for that water brook. And when when he finds the the water brook, then thank God, his body becomes hydrated again. He begins. That's the way we got to thirst after God. God must become a necessity and not just an option. Well, I believe I read the word a little bit. If I have time. What you mean if you're, you're not thirsty? So this water ain't just going to fall on anybody. It's going to fall on those that's panting. I got to have more God. I got to have some more word. I'm going to spend tomorrow in some fasting and prayer time. I'm turning off the television. I'm turning it. You know, I'm going to get in the word of God. Pray. I think I'll lock the door like Jesus said and go into my prayer and spend an hour building myself up, stirring these walls. That's who it's for. That's, that's the key to revival. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. It, 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 they started in prayer, and once the Holy Ghost hit, it hit the streets. They got in Peter's shell. People got healed. Praise God, miracles and signs and wonders, praise God, begin to happen. The man at the beautiful gate, silver and gold have I done. Give I thee. We get walk. He was healed. Miracles, signs, wonders. God is dark. Uh, uh, Paul, praise God, perceived that men had faith. There were signs and wonders. That, that's what we're talking about. The outpour is not just for you. It's for the whole body of Christ. And before Jesus returns, it's already it's going to happen. Now, I know if all you're doing is watching news and bad news, and I know this is, I ain't going to get into it. I refuse to get it. I ain't talking about the election year, even though I know it is. And there's all types of vision and this and that. And I ain't got time for that. I'm going to be preaching the word. You want to get in that, go mark, go good. I'm going to be preaching the word of God because I trust God. God going to take care of his people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. So that's enough said about that. I'm thirsty for the word of God. I'm still hungry for the word of God. I still want to get the same results in ministry that Jesus got. When he laid hands on lepers, they got healed. When he touched blind eyes, they opened. When he put his fingers in, um, uh, uh, in ears, that was, they opened, praise God. And we, the works I do shall you do also. Well, that's, that, that's not by might. That's by the Spirit. Now, I know you like, it don't take all that. And maybe not for you. That just means you're not thirsty. Because with that heart says, i got to have water. Water is not an option. It's a necessity. Now, I want you to look at me in Psalms, I mean, excuse me, Isaiah 59. We're talking about this great Holy Spirit outpouring. And Jesus said, come unto me. If you're thirsty, come and drink. For the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, but he spake ye of the Holy Ghost, which not, was not yet given. So he's talking about manifestations of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Now here in Isaiah, let's keep this scripture in its proper perspective. Look at verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy shall come in, comma. Because the enemy don't have no flood. Religious folks say when the enemy come in like a flood. No, when the enemy shall come in, we just read where the flood is coming from. We got the flood. 
Flood is powerful. A flood, I don't know if flood water will move mobile homes. It'll move houses. It'll move trees. The devil ain't got the power. We got the power. So the enemy comes and try to come into your life, come into your home, come into your marriage, into your church. Like a flood, the spirit of the Lord. See, the spirit, he spake ye of the spirit, shall lift up the standard against him. This, this flood power coming, when the enemy try to come in because I'm so built up and I'm so flooded with the word of God and by the way, which represents the word because it's called the washing of the water word. I got so much word, so much water coming out of me. I lift up a standard against this, sick, sick, sickness and disease. I lift up a standard against cash and say not here. No evil shit befall me. No plague come not here. Why? You don't come into my house. You don't come into my church and kill, steal, and destroy. We lift up a set. See, if the church had this flow like a flood, that means the river has overflowed its banks and now it's flood water, which is powerful water. Man, you want to see power, then you, 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 you are, if you ever been in the midst of watch the flood, it moves everything God's way, man. Sickness, disease, nothing. like a flood, we lift up upstairs. We got the flood power. We got the power. You said, now, brother, dear, you just trying to change the Bible. You just trying to change. Now, I ain't trying to do nothing. I'll show you from the Amplified exactly what I'm talking about. Look at this scripture in the Amplified. So as a result of the Messiah's what? Intervention. When the Messiah intervenes, when Jesus would come on the scene out of his medicine show, this is the intervention of the Lord. Not the devil, the Messiah, Jesus. Notice what it says here. As a result of Messiah's intervention, they shall reverently fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun when the enemy shall come in, comma, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him, put him to flight. What? Sickness, disease, Satan himself. See? For he will come, who? The Messiah, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, like a rushing stream, which the breath of the Lord is dry. Not the devil. He ain't got nothing to do with that. The breath of the Lord. We're talking about God himself intervening. When you resist the devil, he'll flee. Like a flood, praise God. The word of God is flooding out of you. The anointing of God is flooding out of you. And God is intervening. And when he come in, we lift up a standard and we, pray, we put the devil to flight. That's what it's talking about. We've been talking about when the enemy come in like a flood. The devil ain't got no flood. It didn't say out of the devil shall flow rivers of living water. It didn't say out of demons shall flow. It says out of you, your spirit. And that's the result of the Messiah. That's Jesus saying, that's my intervention. Praise God. You put the enemy to fight. You stand up against sickness and disease. You stand up against life. You stand up against the onslaught of the onslaught of the enemy, being built up in the most holy faith, praying out of the Holy Ghost, and it says it's like a flood. It ain't like water's literally come out, but it is symbolic of the power of God, this great outpouring come being poured through you. I don't let the devil run over me, my family, my home, my church, my members. Praise God. As a matter of fact, I can understand the intervention of the Lord. It's, it's almost like the holy indignation of God comes on me. Sometimes when there are certain members, I see the enemy is attacked and the compassion of Jesus come on me. It's like a flood. When I pray, I can feel the flood power of God, the anointing of God rising up from my innermost being. What is that healing? The Holy Spirit is the healer. That's the power of God. He's the one who does the works. He's not just the one to make you shake and quake. He was there in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth and darkness. The earth was void and full of the dark. The spirit was there moving, waiting on God. And God said, and the power began to re be released. And it drove back darkness. It drove out Satan and his influence in this earth. The Holy Spirit is powerful. He's right here. Like he, he spake here of the spirit. Holy Ghost power, anointing. Praise God. So the enemy don't have no flood power. You're the one with the flood power. 
The enemy does not have flood power. You're the one. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of water. Build up yourself praying in the Holy Ghost. But he spake ye of the Spirit. And thank God for the anointing, the Holy Ghost. Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit. And so when we speak the word and I'm built up, I want you to know sickness can't stand in my presence. Depression can't stand in my presence. Demonic spirits can't stand in my presence. In the name of, come out, you can't stay. Oppression of the enemy can't stand in my presence. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing all oppressed. Sickness is satanic oppression. God don't want you bowed over. God don't want you bound and crippled and, 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 and carrying sickness and disease. That's why when Jesus came into the temple, the Bible said he saw the woman had been bound over for 18 years and that anointing was on him. He said, wait a minute. Oh, not this woman being the daughter of Abraham. That's part of our covenant. Be loose on this seven day. Y'all guys, you get your oxen out of, out of the ditch. Is these oxen more valuable than this woman? And he didn't say, woman, I'm loosing you. He said, woman, thou art loosed. You're already free. And when he began to speak the word, that anointing flow, she was made straight. Blind eyes open. People were getting healed. Why? Power was flowing out of Jesus. He said, the words I speak, they're not my words. I speak the word of God, but it's the Father that dwells in me. That anointing, it does the work. I ain't got to heal anybody. But I want you to know, praise God, when I run into them, like a flood, sickness and disease, satanic oppression cannot, I will not allow it to stay in, not in my presence. But you got to be built up. See, if you ain't built up, you're going to back down because, see, you're you going, oh, my God, that's the devil, man, I, I'm not, I ain't in no condition to antagonize the devil. I know because you ain't been in the word. You ain't been built up. That's why I'm saying you got to get thirsty. Look at Zechariah 4, verse 6. Remember, he spake ye of the spirit, which was not yet given. So he says here, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Wow. It ain't about your power. See, he says, out of your belly. It's my power. Nor by your might, how strong you are. But by my spirit, in other words, by the Holy Ghost, said the Lord. It's going to get done by the power of the Holy Ghost. This great outpouring. It ain't about how much money you got in the bank. It ain't about how mighty you are. It's about that spirit who is unlimited, by the way, because he is the mind of God. He knows everything about God. He was there in the beginning with God. He's the power of God. He's the muscle of God. He's the one that brought this whole earth into existence. He's the vast computer that, that, that calculated the weight of the mountains in one hand and took a drop of water and weighed, weighed all the seas, the seven seas in the other hand, and balanced it all out and set this earth into motion where it don't wobble. It spins on the axle. The sun rise. And, 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 and goes down and the moon rises. As the Spirit of God brought it all into this, the universe. Who has been his instructor, Isaiah said. That's the same Spirit in you. <laughs> so, but, you know, religion has it's just watered down the power of God. The Spirit of God just a little shake. <laughs> no, it's more than a shake. We're talking about power. We're talking about anointing. Amen. We're talking about the creative power of God. Hallelujah. And so don't look at your little home and become like Gideon and I'm the poorest of my tribe and I don't have no might and we're the least of the no, he said it ain't about your 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 power. It's about my spirit. Oh mighty man of valor. Praise God. Now, these rivers of water, this is so very important. Because we're talking about this end time flow of the Holy Ghost. And it's happening. 
If you're not in the flow, it's because you're not in the know. You're just in the wrong place. You know, some, when we ain't seeing that in our church, we don't, well, there's some people just go strictly by program. They wouldn't give the Holy Ghost a chance if he, if he came in and filled the, flooded the whole church. They still ain't because they, they got to stay by the program. I'm talking about folks that's yielded to his presence, his anointing, what he wants to do. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in this place. Manifest yourself. If there's a word of knowledge, a word of, if there's a miracle, a gift of healing, whatever you want to do. That's the flow I'm talking about. It's not written in that letter. It's a flow. And being sensitive to him. Hallelujah. Praise God. So these rivers of waters, in other words, the Holy Spirit, contain healing, breakthrough power. Notice a flood can break through anything. You've heard about floodgates being open. You've heard about even dams breaking. Why? It was so much pressure. And I don't care what the enemy try to bring. Walls of limitation in your finances. Walls of limitation for your healing, for your influence. You'll never be on television. If I can't, always trying to, wall represents limitation. When a floodgate comes, it removes everything in its path. God is saying, praise God, no more limitations. No more limitations, praise God. The walls of Jericho coming down. Go in and possess the land. Praise God. Drive out the giants. I've given to you every place the soles of your foot. You have the power. You have the anointing. Praise God. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. And if you look at that, most of the time, that's what happened. It wasn't Moses wasn't so powerful. He just showed up and said what God said. Thus said the Lord, put forth the rod, and the Spirit of God split the Red Sea, made a way out of nowhere. I don't know what you're facing tonight. Praise God. It wasn't his power nor might, but by my spirit. This breakthrough power. And the Bible says the children of Israel went across on dry ground. They're walking, and we're talking about the Red Sea. By a strong breath of God. I mean, look, they're looking at turtles. They're looking at sea turtles. They're looking at, at dolphins. They're looking at whales. They're looking at all types. And they're walking, man. So it's not about some of the time, well, I don't, it ain't about what you got in base. It's about my spirit, said God. You see it all through the Bible. People would just show up, and then God would, God, Elijah just showed up, God answered by fire. It was his spirit manifestation. God ain't asking you to do it. He's just asking you to show up, Jehoshaphat. Just go out there, praise God, and, and, and put down all your natural weapons, and I want to get some praises, praise God, and just say, praise you the Lord. They showed up, and God sent them bush. It was by spirit. Four lepers, the least likely to succeed. Why sit here until we die? They ain't had no power, they had a might. But when they moved, got up, God made it sound like an army of a million. And the Spirit of God made it sound. You don't know what God make your enemies hear when you move toward faith and move praise. And the Bible says they left their food, they left their weapons, they left their joy, and ran off. And four lepers brought food back to Samaria. So, you know, we make excuses about how well, I live on the wrong side. It ain't where you live. It ain't how much money in the bank. It's the Spirit of God out of you shall flow rivers. Now watch this. I want you to see something about these, these rivers of living water. Jesus said, remember what he said now. He says, if you're thirsty, come to me and drink. For the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Healing, breakthrough water. Now remember, a river is not just for you. It's for everyone. I'm going to show you how this end time Pouring out of the Holy Spirit is not only for signs, wonders, and miracles, but a great harvest of souls. You remember what Jesus said, Peter? Henceforth you shall be fishers of men. What you've been doing in the natural is a microcosm of what you're going to do worldwide. You're going to have 3,000, you're going to be a great pastor. Now look at Ezekiel 47. And it shall come to pass. Everything that liveth, which moveth, people, live people, move. there are sick people, broke people, broken hearted, bound people, that these rivers shall come, shall live. Wheresoever they go, see, out of you, we're bringing deliverance to people. 
shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish. He ain't talking about. He's using, he's using this as a type and shadow. He's talking about people. Because there's all types of black people, white people, all types of fish. Croker, salmon, this, that, all types, white fish, dish, whitey, all, all types of people. And because these waters shall come, where out of you to these people? They shall be healed, and everything that shall, watch this, everything shall live wheresoever the river cometh. Well, where's it come? Out of you. This anointing. Be healed. Be delivered. Folks getting saved. Watch this. Verse 10. And it shall come to pass that the fishermen, see, we're the fishers. Of he that wins souls is wise. Because once they begin to see these signs and wonders and miracles of people getting healed of leprosy and people getting healed of cancer and leukemia and all this because of this water flowing out of her, they're standing there, praise God, makes the church attractive. She'll stand upon the banks, that's what the Amplified says, of Engida until England, and they shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kind, and the fish of the great sea exceedingly many. We're going to see many people come into the harvest of God when we begin to let these rivers flow out of us. Every place, notice where the river come. It didn't say that we, 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 the hospital is going to come to you. The prison is going to come. Every place you go. It didn't say that those on foreign soil are going to come. You got to go every place you go. And you begin to speak the word of God. And where some of these rivers of living will flow out it's going to be of. It's the life of God. It's the Zoe of God. It's anointing. It's the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of water, but he spake ye of the Spirit. And we got to take the Holy Ghost to the hospital. We got to take it to the lame, the blind, the halt, the wood. Every place I go, praise God. Hallelujah. You're rivers of living water. And it's going to cause fish to come in. And we're going to throw out nets out and win souls. That's the great end time harvest. Because Jesus said, if you don't believe me, Look at the miracles. Why you think people throng him? Why you think there was multitudes following him? 20, 30 thought because they saw the power flowing. They, say, they saw something that the religious folks didn't have. All they was doing was washing cups and praying long prayer. But Jesus was praised God, miracles and signs. This, this river was flowing out. But he ain't here anymore. Now, we're the church. We got to take his place in the earth. And he said, it's going to cause many souls to come in. You'll become fishermen of men. In our words, it's a flow. It's an on. You ain't got to beg and dig. When people begin to seek, you get their children healed. You get their bodies healed. Praise God. They'll want to flow. They'll want to get into the flow. Because it's the goodness of God that calls men to repent. So he said, every place these rivers come, they're going to flow. Now look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings. So there's an end time. And if this seems strange to you, it's simply because you, it depends on what camp you're in. If you're one of these doom camps that's saying go hide and just hold out and hold on for Jesus and you already buying survival food, that's why you ain't saying nothing. I don't know where you, I'm talking about folks that's, that's hungry for God, that's thirsty. We're seeing these things happen. Praise God. God is restoring things back to Zion, to the church. It's being built back up again. 1 Kings chapter 18. That's why you need to get back in church, get back in service, get in a live service, praise God. So these rivers can touch you on Sunday morning. So they're flowing. They're flowing from this pulpit. We're flowing. They're, we're sending souls. We're sending people joy. We're, and it's a flow. It's like a sweatless anointing. Why? It ain't me. It's the rivers. It's the power of God that's flowing out of it. Wow. That's, ooh, Lord. that's why Jesus had to tell the woman with the issue of blood. She, she, her faith was misguided. We, I'm going to teach this one day. But she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Well, when she touched him, you know the story, dunamis went out of Jesus' power, this river flow, healing flowed to her. Jesus turned and said, woman, your faith has made you whole. Not my fabric, your faith. See, she had misguided faith. Hallelujah. 
Because she'd done something that no one had did before. Up in the den, no one had that testimony. Up in the den, they heard about Jesus laying hands on people, Jesus touching people, and then they're getting healed. But she said, if I can touch Jesus, whew, and what she touched, the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So she established a testimony no one never heard of. It wasn't, a, and, and Jesus had to, so that the faith, you know, all of a sudden they start selling, you know, uh, his garment. He said, no, it wasn't the fabric. Your faith has made you whole. And the reason she touched the hem of his garment, because when you're doing a man, tailoring a man's suit, the hem is the last thing you do. He get it fitted, size, everything. And once you get the last thing they do is hem it. That means it's finished. They hem the cuff or the pants. She touched the finished work of Jesus. It's finished. My healing is done. And the anointing flowed. These red flowed out of her. And Jesus wanted to make sure that when she left there, he, the Bible says she wanted to turn and tell the woman the thing she had done, her faith had done, not my fabric, your faith. Praise God. And we got to get our faith back in Jesus, praise God, and tap into his finished work. Now, let me close. First, first Kings 18, because I'm excited, man. I'm, I'm just glory to God. This is the Bible. Man. This ain't just Pastor Diggs, you know, just way out on a trip. No, I'm telling you what the Bible said. Praise God. Hallelujah. Great outpouring, rivers of living water. Look at, let's, let's get ready to bring this thing home. Elijah, uh, here in First Kings 18, verse 41, and Elijah said to Ahab, get thee up. Well, I hear the sound. See, everybody can't hear, depending on what you're listening to. Depending on what channel you tune into. Whoever is informing you is forming you. That's why people think in this way and that way. Hey, you better let the Bible be informing you instead of some channel. Because there's a sound in the spirit of an abundance of rain. Rivers are coming. And he said, hey, help. you better get me up. You better eat and drink. Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and he cast himself down. And he put his face between his knees, building himself up in the most holy. Prayer, prayer position. You got to be in prayer to see this thing, to hear the sound. You don't hear it watching television. You hear it in prayer. And he said to his servant, get up now. Look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, oh, there ain't nothing there. And he said, go again seven times. See, Everybody, the devil say, when you start first, start praying. He goes, so look, ain't nothing happening in your finances. Ain't nothing happening with your children. Ain't. No, you got to know in your spirit what God has said. He said, no, you need to go back. And the seventh time, the Bible says, because there are a lot of people, they didn't see it the first, second, third. Well, I guess God didn't hear my prayer. No, he said, no, no, I know what I hear in the spirit. There's coming an abundance of rain. There's an outpouring coming here. He said, go again seven times. And it came to pass that on the seventh time, he said, behold, there arise just a little cloud out of the sea like a man's head. And he said, go. To a he said to Ahab, you better pray your, prepare your church. Get thee down, that the rain stop thee down. And it came to pass that meanwhile that the heavens were black with the cloud and wind. And there was a great rain, great outpouring. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. And he girded himself up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Now, Jezreel was about 20 miles away. Elijah, Elijah is running. Ahab is riding on a chariot. And Elijah passed him. So we need to look at that from the Amplified in verse 45 and 46 so we can get the full effect of what was going on. It says, in a little while the heavens were black and the wind swept by windswept cloud and there was a great rain and Ahab went to Jezreel. And the hand, well, you know what the hand of the Lord is? The spirit of the Lord. Not by power, no, by, but by my spirit was on Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel nearly 20 miles. Oh, my God. He's passing the best class there's a land. Praise God. Why? The Spirit of God is on him. Spirit of God is on him. In this great outpouring 
of the Holy Spirit, we're going to see an acceleration of things, an acceleration of debt cancellation. We're going to see an acceleration of household salvation, an acceleration, praise God, of all types of signs, wonders, and miracles, things that it took other people three and, and five and 30-year mortgages are going to be accelerated and paid off in five years. God is going to accelerate your debt cancellation, accelerate your household salvation. Wow, not by poverty. When the Spirit of God comes on you, thank God, there's supernatural. Let, let me go and put this up. There's a coming, and it's already a, a, an abundance of rain, the Holy Spirit, to thirsty Christians. First of all, that's what I want you to see. It ain't coming to just nowhere ever and anybody. It's coming to thirsty Christians. We talked about that. I'm going to give you another scripture, Psalm 63, verse 1 and 2. Our Psalm of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah, oh God, thou my God, early. See, that's the key. Seek God early. Start your day with God. If you put God first, then everything else will fall in place. Early will I seek thee. That's why. Because I'm thirsty. I ain't lazy. I'm thirsty for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. What do it long for? I want to see your power. I want to see your glory as I seen thee in the sanctuary. I'm thirsty for the power and for the glory of God. Praise God. Now look at this then. This outpouring then will give you accelerated progress and ability. Accelerated. And when the spirit of God came on, this abundance of rain came, when this outpouring comes, my God, you're going to be able to build that building quickly. All of a sudden your church growth is going to begin to accelerate. All of a sudden, the anointing is going to begin to accelerate. Debt cancellation. What's taking other people 10, 15, 20 years? God going to do it in two years. And let's say, why? Not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, said God. First Samuel chapter 10. That's what's so excited about it, praise God. Then the spirit of the Lord came upon you mightily. It will come upon you mightily. You will show yourself to be a prophet with them. And you shall be turned into another man. Elijah turned into another man. When these signs shall meet you, in other words, everywhere you go, these signs are going to follow you. Do wherever you find to be done, for God is going to be with you. Praise God, this river is going to be flowing. And things that look hard to other people, you're gonna, it's going to be accelerated. Healing, deliverance, paying your house off. Household salvation. Why? The Spirit of God is going to come on you like it did Elijah. You're going to get supernatural, accelerate, and energy. Look at, look, at, look, look, look at Colossians. Paul said, for this I labor in weariness, striving, watch this, with all superhuman energy, which he so mightily enkindles and work in me. Talking about Jesus. Super human energy. And you're going to, I'm just so tired. Even a young man shall live fan and get where God says, I'm about to renew your strength. I'm about to accelerate things. I'm about to invigorate you. That's what water rain does, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. So get ready for accelerated progress in everything you've set your hands to do. Praise God. The vision is about to come to pass quickly and ability. Let's close with Hosea chapter 6. Praise God. Praise God. We're talking about the sound of abundance of rain. Depends on what you're listening to. Depends on what channel, what channel you're turned into. You need to be turned, tuned in to W-O-D word. W-O-R-D word. But there's a lot of channels. And whoever is informing you, that's what's forming you. That's why you think. That's why some of you are depressed. Because you listen to depressing people, depressing outcasts about your this and the CNN and ABC and Fox and so and so said, and the new man said, well, that's your problem. You need to be tuned into the word of God. There's a different sound. If, you, if you're praying, building yourself up, and it's a sound, there's rain is coming, anointing is coming. Now, let's close with Hosea. And God bless you. I want to see y'all in church Sunday too. Praise God. Get in the live service. Get under these great rivers and let these rivers touch you and heal everything that's hurting in your life, causing it to live, anything that's dead. Praise God. These rivers flowing out of you. He said, wherever it go, they shall live. Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come, let us return unto the Lord. See, we got to come back. God didn't leave us. We left God. 
A lot of people left away back before the pandemic. God says, come back. Come home. Get back in church. Get back. Get back. Let them come. He have torn. He'll heal us. He has smitten us. He'll build us up. After two days, two, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. After two days, it's been nearly, the th- he will revive us the third day. Jesus got up on the third day. It's symbolical resurrection power. And he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, not if you just, well, I used to go, I used to go to church. How many people started but did He said, then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. His going forth shall be paired as the morning, and what? He shall come to us as the rain, the latter and the former rain. The same outpouring of the Holy Ghost plus this end time, a double portion of the anointing God. He said, if you follow on, he's going to revive us. If you go on, I'm going to come to you as a rain. Put this up in the Amplified as we get ready to close here. Come, let us return to the Lord. That's the key. Some people, they ain't hungry anymore. Get your joy back. Get your hunger back. Get your thirst back. Praise God. Get back in church. Start reading the word again. He have torn that he may heal us. He's stricken that he may bind us up. Do we have verse 2 and verse 3? It says, and after two days, he will revive us. We're in revival. Quicken us. Give us life. That's what the Holy Spirit does. It's a quickening spirit. And on the third day, he'll raise us up that we may live before. Remember those rivers cause everything to live. Yes, let us know, recognize, acquainted with. And understand him. Let us be zealous and know the Lord to appreciate and give heed to and cherish him. His going forth is repaired as certain as the dawn. In other words, just as certain as, as the morning, fall or night, the dawn, fall or night. Guess what? He's prepared. He will come to us as heavy rain. The latter rain that waters the earth. I hear the sound of abundance. There's a great outpouring. He'll come to us as heavy rain. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God says, return unto me, and I will come to you as heavy rain. You can't replace other things, substitutes for genuine thirst for God. That's what we've done. We've gone after other things. We've gone after personalities. We've gone after uh, after stuff and, 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 and and we've gone after all, everything trying to quench this thirst. But God says, come unto me, all you that's thirsty. First John 4, 13 and 14. Jesus answered and said to her, talking about the woman at the well. Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. That's been a problem. We thought if we get this, if we got a new car, new home, all these things we were thirsting for, and you're still thirsty because you cannot take material things to meet spiritual needs. They don't, t- that's just toys. God give me all that. I'm still hungry. I'm a blessed man, but it ain't about stuff. He said, you'll thirst again. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give, here it is, the water that I shall give shall be in here a well of living. And thank God a well can support everybody. Springing up, we're out of you in the everlasting life. So put up this last statement as we close. We have pursued Wrong sources to quench our thirst. Now, I ain't just talking about alcohol and butt light and butt wise. I'm just, just about whatever. We thought, well, maybe if I get a new house, if I get a new car, if I get a job, if I get my degree, if I get whatever. All of these things trying to quench that a place that only God can feel, a thirst that only God puts in us that his presence can feel. And I'll close with Jeremiah 2.13. He said, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. Watch this. Capital S, the fountains of living water. We, they, they done forgot about me. They gone after gods, gone after this, and gone after that. And if I can get money, if I can get this, if it's this group, that group. They, they, they've left the very foundation. And they have hewn. That means dug when you hewn out some. For themselves, citrons are wells. Citrons are Broken sisters that cannot hold water. They're temporary. The house is temporary. The clothes is temporary. The degree is temporary. 
Sin is temporary. It's the pleasure of sin, but sin, it can't hold water. And we've gone after things trying to quench the thirst that only God can quench. And that's why the woman at the well, she had had five husbands, was still thirsty. She thought it was in relationships. If I find the right man or the right lady, woman, and when she met Jesus, he said, give me this one. He says, I don't have nothing to draw with. He said, I know you don't. He says, if you drink of that water, woman, you're going to thirst again. But if you give the water I give, you won't. She said, give me this water. She said, let me go get my husband. He said, I don't have a husband. She said, you've answered right for your shacky woman. She thought she was trying to get in relationship. If I just find the right man. But then, praise God, Jesus told her everything. And the Bible says, she went to Samaria, which was the despised cousin of the Jews, people that were rejected, and the whole city came out because of one thirsty woman. One thirsty person in a church can change a whole congregation. You get hungry enough and you're willing to pray enough. There's coming a sound of abundance of rain, but let it start with you. Don't wait on no one else. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. But we've gone at the drugs and alcohol and illicit sex. We thought, well, maybe it's parted. Maybe if I get me a new car, maybe if I get build me this. And ain't nothing wrong with that stuff. God wants you. But it's not going to quench this thirst. And he said, that's what people have done. They've, they've, they've healed out. They've dug out all this stuff thinking it's going to satisfy them. And yet, I am the fountain, capital S, of living water. And I close with Jesus' words. If any man thirst. Let him come unto me, for out of his belly, the scriptures said, have said, shall flow rivers of living water. There's coming a sound of the abundance rain. It's already started. There's different levels of it. Some of us is deeper than others, depending on your prayer life, depending on where you're at. But praise God, this is for everybody. So we want you to get back in church. I want to see you on Sunday morning. You know I love you. Praise God. God loves you. Praise God. Start where you're at. Continue to pray for me and Joyce as we pray for you. God bless. We'll see you on Sunday morning.